Hello everybody, and today I'm going to talk about Superman Brainiac Attacks. So, uh, this movie came out in 2006, uh, by the time uh, Superman Returns came out. And maybe I should talk about other Superman movies before starting this. Uh, I liked the first two, definitely the Richard Donner cut was really good, and Superman 3, eh, and Superman 4, I really don't like that movie. Superman Returns I thought was boring, and, uh... I think uh, Man of Steel was decent. And there's other Superman DC movies. We had Superman uh, Doomsday. I think this came out... I think that came out after a year after this. So uh, this movie takes... I It looks like the art style of the DCAU, the Superman animated series. And But for some reason, it doesn't take place in that world. Even though I, I'm thinking, why not? But it's basically about... Uh, Rainiac is trying to take over Metropolis and destroy Superman, and Superman has to keep um, trying to kill Brainiac as possible. Like, he kills him once, but then he just comes back. And with the help of Lex Luthor, he tries to take down Superman. And during that, Superman's trying to tell Lois that, uh, that he's Superman. And his parents are just like, why not? And... Superman's just like, uh, it would endanger her. And then they try to say that they're perfectly fine, even though they know his secret. But uh, Superman is just struggling. And he's trying to protect Lois as well. Like, early on in the movie, she and Jimmy Olsen try to get a shot of the scene. Superman Brainiac fighting. And then Superman does take down Brainiac before Lois is about to fall to her doom after she tries climbing a like a skyscraper. And so, and then later, um, Superman and Lois go on a sort of date. Not really, it's just like they hit the critique f- restaurants. And uh, Superman ends up having to leave after Brainiac returns. And he basically, Superman goes to like the Fortress of Solitude to find answers, I'm pretty sure. But he ends up destroying it after Brainiac invades. He does it just to stop him. It's also because uh, Brainiac also infected um, Lois with this disease and Superman as well. But Superman's fine because he's Superman and Lois is about to die. We even get to see a hallucination scene where Superman does tell Lois that he's his secret, but it's all revealed to be a hallucination in the Phantom Zone, and I thought that was disappointing. I honestly wish the movie ended like that, but later at the end, uh, Superman ends up not revealing it. He's just like, Lois is like, when when she gets cured by something Superman finds in the Phantom Zone, it makes no sense, and then Superman, when, when Lois then wakes up, and is just like, Clark, and then Superman's just like, no, it's Superman, and and then the movie just ends with uh, Lois taking off her uh, hospital gown, and Clark is about to quit the Daily Bugle after everything he's been through in this movie, and then Lois is somehow just wearing her clothes and just runs off to write the next story, and that just shows how confident she is. And yeah, this movie was kind of just a typical Superman story, I mean... Superman's not like my favorite superhero, but I really do admire him as a character. And the villains here, um, it was cool seeing Brainiac. I like how he, it was kind of creative that he kept on switching bodies just to take down, to just to annoy Superman. And where Superman literally just smashes another copy of him just to make sure he's gone. And Brainiac's literally a robot. And also, there's something weird about this movie. The cast is completely different. Like, like Clancy Brown, who's amazing as Lex Luthor. They got some other guy. I, I forget his name. I think his name is Powers, I'm pretty sure. He plays Lex Luthor. I, I thought his voice was a little too goofy for Lex Luthor. Apparently, I looked at the INDB. It says that you, they're trying to go for a Gene Hackman Lex Luthor. I'm not really into that version of Lex. No offense. Gene Hackman's a gift was definitely an actor back then, but for this movie, I just didn't feel like it worked. 
And uh, I think George, I think his name is Newton. Wait, no, it's Tim Dale who plays Superman in this instead of George Newton from the DCAU. Uh, I think he's good as Superman. I, they both kind of just sound the same. I think they're both really good as Superman. And definitely would like to see I wouldn't mind seeing him again in this role. It's, there's really no difference in my opinion. I think the same girl who played Lois is also in this. Um, she sounds confident per usual. I really like Lois in most of the DCAU, even though it doesn't take place in the DCAU, but they go for the same animation style for some reason. I honestly see this movie as something you'd rent for your kids at the library or family video, and their kid could just watch it and just go, ooh, this is cool, and then just call it a day. That's what I feel like this movie is. It's just a cheap tie-in. And I think it's decent enough. There are some good scenes, like where Lois does say everything good about Clark, like positive. Uh, it was somehow consistent, consistent with the story. Other than that, I'd probably give this movie like a six out of ten. So, if there's any other Superman movies or other DC animated movies you'd like to hear me talk about, tell me. So uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.